with me just a couple more times. Oh, we love to praise you. Oh, this love of God. Oh, I love you, Jesus, because you first loved me. Oh, I love you, Jesus, because you first loved me. Oh, you first loved us, Lord, and gave yourself freely for us so that we would not be held captive to the bondage of slavery of sin, but be raised up into life, everything transformed and made anew made righteous, called, called of God to live out the abundant life, to live life as you intended, Father. And with hearts wide open, we say, we love you and have your way in this place. Have your way among your people. Oh, all we want is you, Lord. For you alone can bring change to every area. You alone can set things right. You alone can stop hell that would try and lie against people. That would create captivity. That would squeeze the life out of them. But Christ has come to set us free. That we can live in the liberty and stand fast in it. Steadfast. In like precious faith. In like precious faith that you have given, Lord. And we say we receive it, Lord. We receive it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for your glory, God. Your glory that empowers, your glory that overwhelms, your glory that saturates, your glory that consumes, your glory that transforms. Oh, your presence, Lord, so dear, so precious. Marvelous are your works, God. We can just open up our eyes and begin to see by the Spirit the things that you are doing. That we be not blinded, but our eyes open. To behold the beauty and the sacredness of you. To behold the beauty and sacredness of you. To behold the beauty and sacredness of you. Welcome everyone this morning, those of you visiting, I extend an even more special warm welcome to this place. All we're about is seeking God, seeking His face, and allowing the Holy Spirit to have His way in us and through us, because that is not only what He ordains, but that is what brings radical change and transformation to every part of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord, He is our refuge, and He's our strength, the very present help in time of need. I could keep singing all day of the goodness of the Lord and of His love 
His steadfast, unwavering, unchanging love. And let him pour his love into you that you might be able to pour out to those around you. To be filled with all the fullness of God. What a glorious life. What a glorious life you've given, Father. So great a salvation, truly. So great a salvation, incomparable, undescribable, unlimited work of grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm believing for great things this morning. I tell you, if you have a need, he's going to fill it. He supplies every need. He is the author, the finisher, the perfecter. The supply. Hallelujah. So turn with me, please, to Psalms 121. I'm going to briefly talk about the supernatural help, a help in time of need. Psalms 121 verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth you will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Oh, the greatness of God. Oh, his almighty supernatural power. But we must take hold and receive and count it this work this finished work of the cross so precious for if we do look at all the promises he has for us look at the blessing surely blessing he will bless you coming in and coming out to be behind and before all about you. But he must have you. He must have truth and the inward parts. Hallelujah. And I pray that everyone this morning, whether it's your first time, your last time, or some time in between, that you're here, that you surrender everything about your life. Let his presence just rush in. He's so sweet and he's so good, but we must yield. So in order to be filled, we must yield. So this is a promise of the help we have in our God and looking up unto him. There is help in time of need. And I want to turn over to 2 Chronicles 20 and look at this real quick and show you an example Here of a situation that had a supernatural divine outcome because Judah asked help of the Lord. Judah recognized, and Jehoshaphat is their leader here, that they were not of themselves able to defend and protect against the enemy that would try to overrun them. So a little framework here. And again, I just want that, that context of what's going on to apply to you. For if we run to this throne of grace, we find help in time of need. At the end of cha Hebrews chapter 4 declares to us, so I'm going to begin reading verse 1. 
It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on the side of Syria, and behold, they be and Hazazon Tamar, which is in Engedi. And please excuse me if I'm not quoting these regions correctly. Bear with me. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Now what's going to happen here, keep this in mind, as he sets himself to seek the Lord. And the outcome of just the, the help and recognizing in us that we are not able of ourselves to stop those things that would try to come out against us to create division in our relationships, to create compromise, to create anything that would create a separation from the Father. Sin. But He has the remedy for us if we recognize and are willing to seek Him and to ask help of the Lord. That takes us to verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. It doesn't matter what you may have come into this place and you're going through. All you must do is ask help the Lord, help of the Lord, true help. Not just, you know, Lord, help me. You know, but the sincere cry for help that has truth in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, we're going to begin to see this prayer of Jehoshaphat that's recounting all the greatness of God. Verse 6, He said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? And rulest thou not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might? So that there is none able to withstand you. And truly there is none able to withstand him. The almighty, all-sufficient, omnipotent, omniscient. Verse 7. Are not thou, O God, our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham your friend forever? To be called the friend of God forever. What an amazing privilege. And he invites us into that, that fellowship. That we could be called a friend of God throughout the ages. To be a friend with the Almighty. So amazing. So divine. So selfless that could it only come from an everlasting, eternal God of endless love, who defines love, who created love. Oh, let him, let us, let him pour his love into our hearts. That the showers of blessing, the rain of heaven. Flood our soul. Verse 8. And they dwelt therein and have built you a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in your presence. For thy name is in this house. And cry unto you in our affliction. Then will that hear and help. Again, the helping power. And I pray, just as they had a sanctuary, that you have a sanctuary. A tabernacle. Where the Most High can come and dwell on the inside. That in time of help. 
in time of need, you have a security. You have a supply. For you are found in him. And he in you. Verse 10. Hallelujah. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. So the, here's, here we got this league. This gathering of these kingdoms coming out against to attack Judah. Whom there wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of our possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. And isn't it true that the enemy of our soul would seek to cast us out of our possession and prevent us from our inheritance? It's the strategy of Satan. It's the strategy of the demonic to blind men's eyes. Little airplane. I was wondering what that sound was going by. Uh, hallelujah. Verse 12. Oh, our God, <laughs> will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children, as family gathered up before the Lord. Verse 14, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and now King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid or dismayed by this reason, of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end. You shall find them at the end of the brook, therefore the wilderness of Jeruel, or Jeruel. Verse 17, you need not fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's, and he shall perform it. All we must do is put our trust, confidence in him, for he is well able. Verse 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And I love this, this posture of worship demonstrated here by Jehoshaphat that just shows and demonstrates that absolute yieldedness, that prostrate posture before the Lord of here we are, Lord, we are yours. The complete bowing of ourself, that we not allow anything of ourself to stand in the way. Because if we look to ourself, then heaven can't have its way in us. And I'm much too afraid we'll at least be stalled by the battle that rages against us, if not completely defeated. Here we go. We got the worshiping going on. Jerusalem the, the, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And oh, the power of worship. And we're going to see what happens. But just think about what might have happened had these guys looked to themselves to try and take on three big kingdoms to come out and defeat little Judah. Or what the Lord can do with us when we are little in our own eyes. 
how we can use the least among us. And just that being little by that complete brokenness and humility before the Father that says, I can of my own self do nothing. Lord, have your way. I yield completely. Lord, you fight for me. Lord, you are the victorious conqueror who can conquer any kingdom. You've already conquered all the kingdoms of death and hell and of sickness and disease and evil and turmoil. I tell you, that's who I want to be in league with. And praise God, I have the privilege, and so do you, to dwell in that and to be a part of that forever and eternity. So long as I choose to say yes and not have it any other way, despite what I see around me. But only to have my compass and my map be the word of God that is settled forever and ever. That no principality or power can stop or defeat. That no mind-blinding spirit of hell can stop. But by the word, by the spoken word of God, he framed the ages. And he can breathe life and bring life to every soul and heart and mind and spirit. By the proclamation of his word. And I plead before you, hear his word. Receive it. Do not neglect so great a salvation. Do not neglect so great a salvation. For the Lord's ears are open unto those who are needy. Unto those who are broken. And we say, Lord, we are so needy and so broken before you, God. Oh, and in you and in that posture, you make us mighty upon the earth, God. To conquer and subdue, vanquish and release, to set every captive free. And in the name of Jesus, I command every captive to be set free. Every ear to be open to hear. Every spirit that is dead to live. Oh, breath of God, breathe in. Breathe, oh God. Breath of life. Resurrection life. Though we turn our hearts completely to you. Lord, your word works mightily in us. And how we love your sanctuary. And how we love you, Holy Spirit. In your church. And we recognize that you are here even in our midst. I love the glory of his presence. The witness of his power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise God we're on this side of eternity. We are but a blip in the beginnings of God. But how awesome that we get to be those who get to say in the ages, uh, we were there upon the earth when we had a choice to choose. Where we could have gone this way and that, but we said, no, we will go the straight and the narrow. And we will testify of your goodness, Lord, throughout the ages. And it starts now, Lord, with us testifying by our conduct, by our deed, by our life to those around us. You. And we thank you, Lord, that the battle is not ours, but it's yours as we ask help. 
for there is help in the time of need. If we come to the throne of grace, uh, this is the faith. Jesus Christ in Him crucified, buried, and risen the third day, who ascended and sat down by the right hand of the Father to then send and pour out the Holy Spirit so that we could step into a measureless anointing of Jesus Christ. Isn't that just, just it breaks me <laughs> in a good way. For if you are broken today, He purposes you to be fixed. And that is only possible by the love of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to get back here to, we're getting ready to see what happens in the praise. And then if you take hold of the praise, that no matter what's going on, no matter what around you, there was a power in the praise of recognizing the sovereignty of God. And acknowledging Him and getting the right perspective. <laughs> if we were on a microscopic level, little, little, uh, tiny, teeny molecules and stuff, right? You're in that view. Things could look so overwhelming around you, like, whoa, there's all this huge stuff. But if you come back up from looking in a microscope, as it were, to opening up your eyes from even an aerial view, there's a terrain that's different. There is an ordering of things that is different that your perception has changed just by the virtue of you going from one to another. And today I pray that the Lord just allows and gives us the ability as we yield to him to see things through the eternal, the heavenly perspective and not lose sight of it. For so great a purpose he has for us. Verse 20, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Again, please excuse some cities here pronunciation. I think it sounds cool, Tekoa. Anyway, Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And we, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that, and that should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And praise the Lord, that his mercy endures forever. That no matter who's in here, today can be the first day of the rest of your life. So long as you're willing not to live your own life, but choose to stay to serve God. To follow Christ. To follow him and to not live the same as you came into this place. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Holy Spirit. Ah, watch what's about to happen now. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come out against Judah, and they were smitten. Now, don't just gloss over this. The word that is used here is ambushment. And let me remind you that an ambushment is a surprise attack. A sudden surprise attack. And it just so happened to be, and more than that, because this is the way it works, 
that when they began to sing and praise the Lord, set ambushments. I tell you, God is ready to ambush and annihilate the things that would come out against the purpose, plan, and call He has for you and wipe it out to complete the defeat and ruin, run ruin of the enemy's plans to seize you. And let me remind you of Malachi 3.11 that says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not the destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you are delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. So hallelujah. That praise, that recognition, and glorification of God in our midst, us, as we bring forth the praise. Now sometimes I, I wonder and I kind of wish that all that Jehoshaphat and them, the, that the words had been recorded, what they were praising with, just as we see the prayer was recorded there, that speak of the, uh, the sovereignty and greatness of the Lord. But, and these days, the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us that we might be able to worship in spirit and truth, that by yielding to Him, He brings forth the praise that the Father seeks. And they were smitten, kaput, annihilated, no longer a threat, no longer a problem. Here we go, verse 23. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. Utter confusion, chaos, all of a sudden these three bands are now fighting against each other, complete turmoil. Which is what the powers of darkness really are and create is turmoil, disorder. For we serve a God of complete order and unity and oneness. Who everything is ordered right and set forth and designed. And how awesome is it to think about that? Everything, even from a child growing in the womb to ourselves at our little fingers and everything. We, that we, many of us... Dr. Stewart has a more complete understanding of these way these bodies operate. But even so, there's a dimension that we don't even know that operates by the Spirit that dwells within us. The Spirit. And those that have received the Spirit of life in Christ. And what a beautiful and awesome thing to realize that we really don't know a lot. But we do know the One, so long as we are willing... Who created all this and designed it to have wisdom to number our days? And to do that, which is the outcome of its perfect order and not confusion, division, a complete clash. As these armies went into complete chaos. I pray today that you have not another day of chaos. For it does not matter what goes on around you. There can be chaos around you in this world, but you can be in perfect order, being led forth by the Spirit. For the Lord knows how to keep his children, does he not? For he gave his power to be sons. Hallelujah. And daughters. We're found in the Son, Christ Jesus. Sons. Hallelujah. Found in the Son. The only begotten Son, full of grace and full of truth. Now this is another amazing thing that's recorded here in verse 24 and when Judah came 
toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked and unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. Dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> Verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they were stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Three days. Again, there's three words here used. Spoil. Actually, there's more than three. Spoil. There's an abundance, both riches and precious jewels. And look at on the side of this victory... And let us speak to it of the victory that we have in Christ. This abundance of riches and precious jewels in Christ that He's given us. To demonstrate the kingdom in this earth. And the spoil. And Colossians 2.15 of the spoil talks about, and he having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, trying, triumphing over them in it. Christ Jesus. The supreme triumphant. The supreme victor. Verse 26, and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. For they were blessed, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka unto this day. Then they returned, and every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets into the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for as God gave him rest round about. Please stand with me. And as you're standing... I'm just going to make reference to a couple more verses of Scripture that speak to our help in the name of the Lord. Psalm 124.8, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 146, verse 5 and 6, Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And I could go on with many more that speak and declare the awesome sovereignty of the Lord. But I want to remind you of the heart of this message being this morning. He is your help in time of need. He's a very present help. And the de it doesn't matter what you're going through. He is there to deliver so long as you say, help me, Lord. And by surrender. And in the needy and desperate cry for help. He gives the utmost aid. We thank you, Father, that
that you sent your son into the world to liberate us. To not be held in bondage by anything of hell, death, the grave, sin. All consequences of disobedience. And Father, I pray that every heart in this place turns to obedience, turns to righteousness, turns to you, you who orders all things, you who sets everything aright, you who can make all things possible no matter the impossibility of the situation. You order things aright. You bring the healing to relationships. You bring the healing to the body, to the broken soul. And we praise you for it, Lord. For there is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. We're just going to begin to worship a little bit. If anyone has any needs, Pastor Geneva is going to come up here with me. A minister to me. To minister to me, but also help me minister to you by the Spirit. Because that's all we're doing is ministering by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing this with me. It's a really simple song with a profound statement of the sovereignty of my Lord. There is none like you. For Solomon said, Lord, there's none like you who gives mercy to generation to generation. Lord, there is none like you. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. There is none like him. Oh, there is none like you. He pours out his love so freely. Oh. There is none like you. I'm going to invite anyone to come. I'm also going to invite you to worship the Lord with your substance and with your increase, with the first fruits. pulling up Mal Malachi 3.10 here that says bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now therewith says the Lord God of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not room to retain and as I quoted earlier the next part of that is and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord God of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be delightful in land, says the Lord of hosts. And is it not that we just, we're not desiring a gift of you, as Paul said. But there is something that happens when we're willing to pour out what's dear to us, to the Lord. Our finances, that which is provision to live our day in, day out. But in bringing it to him, the offering, to say, no, Lord, you are my provision. All can pass away and flee away in a moment, but you would remain. Hallelujah. So as some people are coming and the offering, and I praise the Lord for the miracle increase. Let me remind you of another thing, that we've got a couple giant, huge, enormous things going on 
that are historical. We got a crusade coming up in Cuba, and we have the Kashmir Valley. And let me remind you to be in prayer every day for this. Every day for their fast approaching. I believe Kashmir Valley is in three, about three weeks from now. So there's only a little window left to help. Be in prayer to help be in this advancement of the kingdom by being a part in prayer so that the few don't have to do the work of the many, but the many can join in the work of the few. As we just declared to us a couple weeks ago. So please, I beseech you to join in with us for the nation-shaking, bondage-breaking things that the Lord will do in the Kashmir Valley and in Cuba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, there is none like you. Lord, there is none like you. Throughout eternity, age to age, there is none like you. So if anyone has a need, and you'd like us to pray with you, we will do so. You can, you can just come up here. The rest of everyone just be reverencing and respectful of the sacredness of his presence that here is here. If you need to talk or carry on a conversation, please do so elsewhere. And those of you that can and join in with us in prayer as we begin to see the Lord touch and minister to the people that are up here, every need. And you may not want to come up here and you don't have to, but even sitting right or standing in your spot. And in truth you say, Lord, here I am. All of me surrendered for you. Come and have your way and be the help that I need. Everybody say this with me, please. Lord, I give myself to you. I consecrate my life to you. To live for you, Lord Jesus. To live only for you. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. And for those of you who said that, and in the depths of your soul you meant it, the Father heard it, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost heard it. And the beautiful thing is, He wants it for us more than we want it for ourselves. He wants to fill us so full of His love, His joy, His peace, His gentleness, His meekness, His goodness, His faith, His temperance. All the character and the fruit of God. Hallelujah. 